Oh gosh, hello everybody. Hello from Seattle, Washington in the upper left-hand corner of the United States. And there is no R in Washington. Once again, I come to you under the persona, because this isn't really me at all. I'm totally not like this. Of Randy Jimmy James Bowles. Yes, I'm actually a shy bookworm. Today's story is for all the dog and cat lovers in our audience. Well, especially the cat lovers, I think, and you'll see why. And to all the dog lovers, I'd like to apologize and I'd like to say that Cat Girl, my pussy cat, would like to apologize, but she wouldn't like to apologize. And also, that reminds me, I should mention this too. If you saw the thumbnail on this, you noticed that the, the title of the story has the word doggy in it. Such a cute word, doggy. But the thumbnail picture is that of a huge Norwegian forest cat. Some people say Maine Coon, but I like the sound of Norwegian forest cat because I'm, I'm part Scandinavian and I don't know how much Maine I have in me, but I do have 12% Scandinavian. Oh, where was I? Oh, why is there a picture of a cat instead of a dog in a dog story? Well, because Cat Girl told me that I had better use it because she's almost big enough to where if she wanted to, she could kill me and eat me in the middle of the night. And she thinks maybe she's a pound or two short of being able to pull that off. So she told me to use her picture for the thumbnail and of course, I immediately agreed. I'm going to read this story to you now, and you feel free to sit back, let your imagination just fill in the pictures. Picture a really cute little doggy in this story and a really large cat. Let me switch over to the story. Oh, I did it. You know, it's amazing how I command this technology. All right, the name of this story is Keep your doggy vest on. It's kind of a play on words from keep your shirt on. But in this case, it makes total sense for me to say keep your doggy vest on. My new friend Bruce, whom I met when he wandered into my folk music gig at Seattle's late lamented, by some, black coffee co-op, reminded me very much of Clint Eastwood. Whenever he appeared, I expected to hear music by Ennio Morricone suddenly playing, you know that, that whistling. At around 70 years of age, Bruce was edgy, wiry, with not an ounce of fat on him. He stood a little over six feet tall. He had a craggy, lined, narrow face and a head topped with thin, steel-gray hair. He could get angry. I could literally imagine him mouthing the famous line, you know, okay, I'll say it, get off my lawn. What were you thinking of, make my day? Yeah, well, he could have said that too. But Bruce was trying to get mellowed out. A former Marine, he'd been a tough guy his whole life. He'd seen a lot of combat throughout the years, but he finally retired. Now he wanted to put that old life and that old persona behind him. He was trying to get in touch with his gentle side, if he had one. One thing Bruce did, he went out and got himself a cute little Mexican chihuahua, whom he named Bandit. Bandit was a very gentle, loving dog, who seemingly wouldn't harm a flea. Appropriate figure of speech? I think so. And having a cat, I know about fleas. Treatment runs about $25 a month. One evening, Bruce paid a visit to the Lower Queen Anne apartment I share with the very cat girl. I named her that because for an indoor kitty, she's a great hunter. So that's K-A-T-G-R-R-R-L. She cops a riot girl attitude when she spots prey. I didn't say potential prey. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If cat girl sees it, cat girl attacks. 
Spiders don't have a chance in our abode. Ugh, they get eaten alive. Well, Bruce brought little Bandit with him for our visit. He was such a cutie with his little doggy vest. Big eyes and all. Bruce casually set him down on the floor so he and Cat Girl could become acquainted. They seemed to do just fine initially. I'd never seen Cat Girl interact with a dog, so I didn't know how she would react. But she seemed calm and not, not at all bothered by the little fellow. Yes, she dwarfed him. Cat Girl is a Maine Coon Norwegian forest cat. It just happens that just happens to be the biggest breed of cat there is. She weighs in at thirteen pounds. That's big for a girl cat. Bandit weighed about one third that amount. Cat Girl and Bandit took off so she could show him the place. I turned my attention away from them and offered Bruce a cup of joe. We adjourned to the kitchen where we chewed the fat while I made the coffee. Well, as we were engaged in the intense conversation, well, you see, every conversation with Bruce was intense. He was an intense guy. We forgot about Cat Girl and Bandit. Bruce was telling me how he had, he had his eye on an old hippie woman he'd recently met in his basket weaving class at the senior center. Between basket weaving and yoga, Bruce was really trying out some new stuff. All of a sudden, we heard a loud yelp. Now, cats don't yelp, but dogs do when they're in pain. So right away, I knew Bruce's bandit was in hot water. I looked in the living room, and I saw a doggy vest lying on the carpet with no doggy in it. Suddenly, bandit ran by at about 90 miles an hour, headed right for the front door. He had literally run out of his doggy vest. <laughs> I wanted to laugh so hard, but instinct told me not to do that. <sighs> While Bruce went chasing after Bandit to comfort him and give him a once-over, I spotted Cat Girl in the far reaches of the living room. Looking at her, I found blood on her white fur. I figured Bandit must have gotten in a good lick, but after examining her more thoroughly, I couldn't find any injury to Cat Girl at all. Bruce gave Bandit a going over, and sure enough, Bandit had suffered a pretty good gash, apparently inflicted by Cat Girl. Bruce walked into the living room and grabbed the vest. He picked up Bandit with his other hand and announced that the visit was over. Finito. Not one to argue, I opened the door, let them out, and started to apologize. But then I just said goodbye, because I realized Bandit must have done something Cat Girl did not like. And he made her day. Well, Bruce never, ever, ever brought Bandit over for another visit. Or himself. Finito.